Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, as you may know, scientists at the University of California in Los Angeles say they've found evidence of a mysterious ghost population of ancient humans that lived in West Africa about half a million years ago. Their genes are apparently living in people across the subcontinent today. Geneticists suspect that the ancestors of modern West Africans interbred with the yet to be fully discovered archaic humans tens of thousands of years ago, much as ancient Europeans once mated with Neanderthals. Well, for more on this fascinating subject, I'm joined now from our Lagos studios by Arise correspondent Judita De Silva. Uh, good to see you, Judita. Thank you very much indeed for. Uh, joining us. Tell us more about this research um, which suggests that populations in West Africa trace a fairly sizable portion of their ancestry to this archaic ghost population. Very sorry to interrupt you there. I'm very sorry to interrupt you, Judita, but we we lost you at the beginning. There was a sound problem, so I'm going to have to ask you to repeat all that again. Uh, just tell us more about this research. No problem. So what happened was that the scientists out of UCLA tested hundreds of West Africans in Nigeria and Sierra Leone. What they found is when they tested DNA, the genetic makeup had an extract that they couldn't ascribe to what they already knew, that is the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. So that's how they called it the ghost population because it's something that is as yet, as yet unascribed and unidentified. But what they do is that they have the concrete evidence based on the, the DNA of West Africans. And so they found out that 2% to 19% of modern-day West Africans, including myself, because they said they could find links to people of many people in Sierra Leone, the Essan and the Yoruba people in Nigeria, and Western people in Gambia, 2% to 19% to have this genetic makeup, which ascribes them to the ghost population. So it's a fascinating thing, because what they have to do now is work backwards. Because we knew with the Neanderthals who um, interbred with the Europeans, and the Denisovans who interbred with people from Oceania, that they had the bones that they dug up and they could extract nuclear DNA and then map as to who was part of which population from what geographical location they were connected to. But what we have is the evidence at the end, which is the end product of the modern day West Africans. And now they have to work back. Well, I have to say I'm absolutely sort of, I mean, fascinated with this story. Now, this was a population because um, because it, it is a complicated story, so, so we may have to go over ground again just to make sure that people in the audience who are not scientists like myself um, understand exactly what we're talking about. This was a population that split off from the ancestors of modern humans before humans and Neanderthals split off from each other. So they were quite distantly related to present-day humans. Yeah, so okay, I'm going to try and break it down as easy as I can. So what you have as an overall umbrella group are hominids. Hominids include um, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and humans. Under the bracket of humans, who are known as hominins, with an N, you have the homo sapiens, you have Neanderthals, and you have the Denisovans. And what happened is that from testing the West Africans, they found that there was another group, and we're looking at hundreds of thousands of years ago, and they, the, from the DNA they have now, they know this interbreeding happened around 43,000 years ago. They split off as another subcategory sub of the hominins. So now you're going to have Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, Denisovans, the ghost population. But what the scientists at UCLA have said is based on what they're finding, 
Africa is possibly the most gen gen genetically diverse continent in the world. Most people will tend to think that it would be the Americas, but actually, even though we're treated monolithically, we're very, very, sorry, homogenetically, we're not a homogenous people and we're very genetically diverse, so they think that there's going to be even more splintered groups within the um, context of the hominins who fall under the brackets of the overall hominids. I hate to keep using the word fascinating, but this really is fascinating, I have to say, because, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, this research was carried out with populations in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia. But what you're saying, based on your analysis of these findings, suggests that even within those populations, there's a, an even greater diversity. Absolutely, because I think that's really why I'm so excited because I'm looking forward to now going to get tested because I'm actually from Edo and I'm Isham. I know that's the anglicized version of the Isham. So it turns out that if I got tested, there's a very high, a 19% chance that I am genetically linked to this ghost population. But then what the scientists have said that with more and more testing based on how many tribes there are and how many people there are across Africa, what it's going to teach us more is give, give us a more contextual and textured spectrum of the origin of human beings. Because like they say, the oldest people are Africans. But as we saw with the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, they splintered off and moved to other parts where we had in Europe and Oceania. But with the complete, the absolute girth and breadth of Africa, you can only imagine how many people who are as yet undiscovered. So archaeologists are probably chomping at the bits to go digging in places they never thought to dig before because they can now work backwards and find a whole new, whole new branches of human DNA. Well, I, I'm chomping at the bit to get to more, more, more of this information and digest it. But I mean, I'm just curious to know whether this research showed substantial differences across those three countries, or, or was the picture broadly similar across those three different countries? That's what they don't have yet, because I think we'll just, we'd probably need to test thousands or tens of thousands of people to start getting the contextual nuances you've just, you've just mentioned. They only tested hundreds, not knowing that we're going to stumble on this revelation. But this has given the motivation for them to now look into the, dif the differences within the West Africans, not just West Africans as an entire section. Because when you've got that, then you can look at the differences in East Africans and see what that leads to. But at the moment now, it's still, early, it's still the early stages of this discussion. Discovery, but at least they know there's something to be discovered and a history that's li that lies on hitting, but at least they know where to look for it. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. It's the early stages of what will have to be you know, much more sort of um, considered research going forward. But what does this tell us so far that we don't know already about West African and human history and the human story? See, what this, what this tells us is almost if you work to the way society works today, when you think of something like racism, where um, black people or African people are seen as one thing, this is starting to give archaeological proof, biological proof, historical proof, that even though we're all seen aesthetically as one kind of people, we are completely different. And this, when people always say in history that all human beings began in Africa, all human beings began in Africa, this is actually scientific proof that can now go into the history books like the Neanderthals that shows that they predated these people. The first splintered off group within the hominins would be these people who then led off to the West Africans. So, you know, you can walk around with a Nigerian flag feeling very proud to know that we date back to the first people who found independence, genetical independence, from the original hominid umbrella of the primates and the homo sapiens. Now, again, uh, Judita, I have to apologize if I make you repeat things, but, I mean, it's just such an engaging discussion um, that sometimes you may find yourself going over the same ground again. So, in a sense, I mean, this study from what I understand, further complicates the story of human evolution, where you have populations splitting off and then coming back together and mixing again. 
Yeah, because what is kind of how it's been understood thus far is how I broke it down from the hominids to the hominins to having Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. But what you're finding out now is if you take a tell, you're telling scientists, archaeologists, anthropologists that that actual category of hominins has boundaries that are pretty elastic, that begins to question, oh, so what we have thus far might not be might not be um, encompassing enough because the way they kind of they ascribe the Neander they connected the Neanderthals into reading with the Europeans is they looked at modern Europeans DNA and they also saw things like the kinds of diseases they have their skin texture their skin makeup their hair their eyes and that's how they linked it back but when you know that it isn't just those three um, those three subgroups there are more subgroups it makes you question not just Africa, that should we go back to the drawing board and see what we missed with Europe and Oceania and the rest of the world. So that's why it gets very complicated because knowing that, oh no, where we start isn't completely covered, where we've ended up isn't completely understood. So in that context, and, and thank you for your abiding patience, but in that context, it's not a complete surprise because we've been seeing this in other contexts, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, these other sort of archaic populations, uh, it's basically telling us that this is a ubiquitous occurrence in human history. Yeah, because I like the point that we, um, you touched on on the Denisovans is actually very intriguing because what happened is originally everyone talked about Neanderthals because archaeological digs had brought up bones and that was kind of the thing they understood first. What happened in about 2008 is that there were some scientists, I'm sorry, some paleoanthropologists that were digging in southern Siberia and they found a tooth and a perfectly preserved pinky bone. Of that pinky bone, they extracted nuclear DNA and found out it was a five to seven year old girl. When they then mapped that DNA, they saw that it was linked to the Neanderthals, but it was so, there were so many distinctly different aspects of the DNA it needed a new category that became the Denisovans. Then they started testing other peoples around that area and they realized, okay, they are connected to interbreeding with Polynesia and Australasia. This now is the same thing you have with West Africa. When you find, if you can, they can dig in the right places and find something like just that lightning in a bottle, like a pinky bone or a tooth, and they extract that DNA, you begin to understand how broad and how textured and how different the origins of the Africans are within the continent. Right, okay. Uh, Janita, stay with us. We want to get uh, to some more of this. Fascinating. Uh, thank you for staying with us, Janita. And presumably, once sort of further study is done, perhaps over long periods of time, different areas of study, etc., should we expect that this mating would have changed fundamentally the population's characteristics? Or we don't know yet because we don't have accurate or enough genome sequence data? I think it's, it's kind of a great time for this discovery to have been made because there's so much similar work that has been done in other parts of the world when we've talked about um, Neanderthals and Denisovans. But then, like, what they said um, in that video is one helps the other. What we have at present informs on what happened in the past. What happened in the past helps us get a, better, a broader understanding of what's happening now. But a point I made before the break about when they were studying like the extinction of Neanderthals, which is about 40,000 years ago, part of it was down to understanding the diseases of modern Europeans and seeing how that evolved. When you look at Africa, when you talk about diseases that are only, kind, that are only found within black populations, for instance, like sickle cell anemia, understanding things like that will be able to be traced back should more research be done, because then you'll be, have to, you'll be able to see the iterations of the splintered groups of the hominins to know what could have then mutated and evolved to become these kinds of illnesses that we only find in, in Africa. So you're thinking about the actual possibilities for the future for a discovery like this could have um, ricochet into places like the medical field, the anthropological field, and not just history and archaeology. So it's really intriguing and really fascinating that more research needs to be done because of the kind of benefits that could come out of it. That's a very good point. Can we, though, at this stage, 
sketch out some possibilities because so far scientists know at least a little bit about what this looks like because they've analyzed the interbreeding between Neanderthals, for instance, and non-African populations. And in that instance, the picture is that on the whole, Neanderthals' DNA has been deleterious or harmful to modern humans. So on the whole, it's led to a decrease in fitness in the modern human genome. Absolutely, because um, what they find is Neanderthal DNA is found in all non-African um, populations. But the thing about this is that once you, once you do more study, it begins to open up an understanding of what negative um, effects it could have, but also when you look at just the nature of Africa as a continent, and you know how varied the peoples are, you begin to start to question why is it, for instance, North Africans have lighter skin? What gives, what, what origin do things like albinism come from? These are all the things that are contained in knowing that the splintered groups of the hominins are so much broader, which has given rise to interbreeding that spawned so many different iterations of the African. So in, a way, in an interesting way and in an anthropological way, this could be the antidote to a lot of ignorance about how textured a continent Africa is, both archaeologically, historically, and now biologically. Yes, that is absolutely correct. But of course, having said that, there are also apparently parts of the genome where sort of Neanderthal DNA could actually have been beneficial. Um, so I suppose that's an example of the kind of inferences we can draw about the impact of archaic DNA on human biology. But just moving on from that, so we don't kind of get bogged down on it, what's the researcher's best guess as to what happened to that ghost population? I mean, did they go extinct or were they assimilated into modern human populations as they spread across Africa? They think that something similar happened to them as with other old um, um, homo sapiens, um, human populations, is that what happens is that as modern populations integrate, it becomes an almost survival of the fittest. And based on the nature of how Africa evolved, they were probably the weaker of the, the, weaker of the brood. And that's how they were, they were um, kind of extinct. But also it would be things like the ch climate change, as well as diet, as well as disease. So it, again, it's one of those situations as the strongest would rise and the weakest would, would wither away. And they were probably the weaker of the evolution because naturally in biology and in humanity, evolution improves. It brings up new, new negative things that people have to navigate around, but humans tend to evolve and improve over time. So modern populations would have an advantage over older ones. So interbreeding would have, done, would have had its part to play. But then, like they say, the apprentice one day must override the teacher, and that's what would have happened. That's the best guess they've got. And as you said, um, Judita, th this research at the moment concentrated in West Africa, but there is presumably the expectation that they would find something similar in other parts of the continent, uh, because as you said, there is tremendous genetic diversity, or at least there appears to be in Africa. So one imagines that they would need to look at the data and collect genome sequences from other parts of Africa. Is there any evidence that that is the next stage in this sort of research? Yes, the lead, the lead scientist from UCLA who did this, um, this study, who made this discovery, said that the next step is to come back and study a bigger um, population within the West. But then you always have to pace yourself because the, the almost guttural reaction is to, oh, imagine what's in the rest of Africa and try to go north or go east. But because it's such a huge continent, concentrating on the West, which we know has places like Sierra Leone, Senegal, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Broadening it out, because like you said, they only studied Nigeria and Sierra Leone and Gambia. Broadening it out a bit within Western Africa gives you a broader spectrum of subjects to study. That's how you begin to invite the, the different variations within your, actually, within your sample pool. From that sample pool, you get more information. From that information, you can track more back. Because you know ideally what you're looking for, but having a girth of information in present day from modern day West Africans will be able to steer you in the right direction. Well, Judita, it's been an education.
Thank you very much indeed. Judita da Silva, <laughs> our correspondent okay. there, who is something of an expert on genome and gene technology there. Judita da Silva talking to me from Lagos. Well, that's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja, Lagos and London. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.